everyone welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video um, in this video we're gonna talk about the uh, getting the Civic on the trailer you can see here is a little bit more challenge because I had to um, increase the angle of attack I guess I don't know what you call it I guess I had to increase the angle of the pitch of the trailer to make it a little bit more straight for the Civic to come on it has a little more overhang than the M3 so what I'm gonna do is put it up on rear tires on ramps, which then pitch it down, so we'll see how it goes. Oh yeah, it's gonna make it. All right, I made it. Cleared, no problem. It was just, I put these little blocks down for the tire so it could at least give it a really good, easy clearance. So I don't scrape this chin because what happens is you rise up over and then you come back down and you can risk now this getting caught under here and just causes a problem backing off the trailer. Let me get all secured and then we'll get underway. All right, so we're underway. And I'm gonna tell you guys the reason why I'm doing this is because it's a new car and ideally I like to find a place local to me that could do the paint protection film but unfortunately the prices were about a thousand dollars more and I save a thousand by going an hour away I think it's worth it I paid hundred thirty dollars for the trailer so I save you know over 900 bucks to have it done here However, since this is an hour drive, I am driving on the highway. I am at a high risk of getting a rock chip or stone on the way there. So this way I can tow it to hopefully prevent um, anything from popping up and, and hitting the vehicle on the way there. So th that's my reason. Guys, I hope that uh, you understand, but um, so yeah. I know it seems a little uh, over the top, but like I said, this is my first brand new car. So I think I'm just being a little OCD over it, at least until the first part. Once I start daily driving it, I'm sure that it's gonna get some battle wounds. I mean, it's, it's a given that any car is gonna have something that's going on when you drive it daily every day. But um, yeah, we're gonna continue off. When I get back to the shop, I'll show you guys what the window tape looks like. And one of the best things I love about the X5 is its smooth ability to tow. Look at here, I'm in 65 miles an hour at the cruise control set. I'm in eighth gear and it's just smooth sailing. Like, I can show you guys the cars behind me. You know the cars behind me, you can see it, but it's perfectly smooth. And I could probably go faster, but I'm just like a really good, comfortable speed. I'm not uh, bringing a lot of fuel and to, it's about 10 over speed limit of what I should be doing in California. Uh, I know I can do comfortably 70, 75 miles an hour, but it's the low end torque on these things. It's just amazing. I still say, I wonder how diesel does because a diesel has to be a lot more efficient with this. I mean, yeah, I do have a lot of torque with this, but the gearing, the torque curve, or the way that is spread out over the power band, obviously this is for performance, but a diesel is for fuel economy and towing power. So, yeah, guys, uh, I think X5, if you don't do a lot of towing, it's a really good tow vehicle because the occasional tow, if you tow maybe three or three times a year, great. It's perfect. But if you I mean, like I said, the only reason I see someone getting a heavy duty truck is if you're doing a lot of towing, like everyday type stuff, then I can see, you know, heavy duty truck because those trucks are built for it, the suspension built for it, transmission built to handle distress. But yeah, I just don't see the reason for a truck. I wonder if the Type R is hard to tow because of the downforce that it adds. You have all the uh, wings and scoops and things. What's frustrating is you pass someone. Look at this guy. Come on. And they speed up. 
and then they ride beside you and I just don't get it. I don't get why people just can't maintain one. I can't get why people can't just maintain one speed. It's super annoying that I have my cruise control set. I caught you a mile down the road and as I get up to you, now I can't pass you. Or I pass you, now you're like matching my speed right next to me. I ended up in increasing my speed right to get away from this guy. He just seems to keep wanting to ride beside me, right beside me. And I first thought, oh, okay, maybe he just checked out the car. No, nope, he just wants to like just ride. He's just sitting here like this, like just, I don't know, gloves on and don't get it. All right, hey everyone, welcome back. I'm at this new place. It's this uh, Stealth Tent in Rockland. So they're gonna take care of the Type of R. Yeah, do you want to inside? You can take it sure. there. Yeah. We're gonna be pulling it over to the right hand side on this side. Okay. Go right ahead. So I went with the Expel XR um, Plus, which is their highest uh, grade of ceramic that they do. It blocks out 98% of the uh, infrared uh, things like red that come through the interior. Now I had the 3M ceramic on the X5. I covered it in a previous video. And I can still feel heat coming through, but it wasn't as much compared to the carbon, the 3M color CS, uh, carbon, whatever it was, 3M CS. Now, this is the best of the best, and I immediately I pulled this car out of the garage. Now, it's pretty much 90 degrees right now, and even then, there isn't any heat coming in. It's amazing how little heat there is coming inside of the front windshield. I had the windshield tinted as well. The windshield is 70%, and then the sides are 15%. Also, you can't tell, but this car also has a clear bra. We talked about that in a previous video as well what I was going to do and the difference between a clear um, basically partial and full now I decided to do the partial and you can't tell where it stops uh, but it does stop halfway up the hood some people don't like partial because of that line I mean if I really wanted to I probably did the front fenders but I just really my main focus is to protect the front half of the vehicle from getting impact now, if you don't want the line, they offer a full, which then continues all the way the entire hood. And if I get closer, you may be able to see it, the transition. But that's it. That's all you're going to notice, if you do notice it at all. Um, uh, the headlights are also treated. And also did, see the fog lights, front bumper. The Honda badge in the front is also treated. All the black on the front is also done as well. Also had uh, these uh, B pillars treated as well. Obviously, you know about the, um, you know how this black plastic gets get little scratches. So I had the B pillars treated. Uh, also right here, C pillar. And then I had them do uh, a little bit more. They mentioned, you know, that I want the trunk area covered. And I was like, you know, that's probably a good idea. I'm really cautious when I put things in the trunk, but like I said, that's me. I don't know if someone else gonna throw something in the trunk or, you know, like I said, um, you know, the kids or something. So I'll make sure, I and mean, you can't, this one, you can't even tell that there's anything here. So, um, most of yeah, most of the car is treated. And I think one more thing I should have, I didn't think about, I should have did this part because this sticks out a little bit more. I have more prone to getting rock chips and things. So that's probably a risk. Well, I end up doing the ceramic coat on top of the PPF. Um, and you can see where before I did the treatment, when I would wash the car, you can definitely tell where it was ceramic coated and where it wasn't ceramic coated. So I went ahead and ceramic coated the top of the PPF and that's it. So if you like the video, um, think this would be toward the end of the, you know, protecting your car uh, series videos that I did. So uh, if you enjoyed it, you know, be sure to give me a thumbs up or something. Uh, thank you for watching.